जय भीम एंड नमो बुद्धाय टू ऑल नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समुद्ध so we are studying the buddhist way of life and uh, so far we have covered the three sections and as we have seen that all the sections are written uh, very clearly by baba saheb ambedkar and uh, this is true about this fourth uh, sub part that we are going to study today and uh, i think uh, the way uh, baba saheb ambedkar has written it you know the, he goes into the depth of the buddha's teachings and uh, makes it very easy for us to understand what is the buddha's teachings so now uh, this is these are just 13 verses in in the in the uh, in this in this in this uh, subsection which is titled as on anger and enmity but uh, though there are only 13 verses each of the verse is very powerful and each of the words uh, given here in this in this in this uh, subsection is of tremendous import and therefore we are going to read and as we do always i am going to reflect on 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 the verses given here so i begin with reading cherish no anger that is the verse number 1 cherish no anger forget no enmities and forget your enmities win your enemy enemies by love this is the buddhist way of life so see all these uh, subsections here are backed by the refrain uh, in the in the second verse following the main important words this is the buddhist way of life so if we 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 want to know what is the buddhist way of life and then you know the, the the first verses first verse of every subsection is important for example here cherish no anger it's very clear that you know what how how do we live a life of a buddhist you know we we cherish no anger we cultivate no anger and forget your enmities but it's not enough only to cherish not to cherish anger but the buddha also recommend forget your enmities because we keep on remembering our enmities all the time you know repeating all the time in your in our minds you know and this this goes into uh, as baba sambedkar has gone into very sequentially the importance of such a teaching forget your enmities win your enemies by love you know i think this is very succinct because most of the times we try to win our enemies by hatred which is not possible by anger it is not possible to win our enemies you know it's whether it's a situation in the family whether it's a situation in the community whether it's a situation between the nations any situations situation of enmity if we are trying to mitigate that enmity by enmity it is never going to be appeased and this is very interesting when baba sambedkar was asked how do we how do we win our enemies he said that you know you you try to uh, win your enemies by persuasion by arguing with them uh, with persuasion and you know you can you can use different methods to persuade your enemies and if all the methods fail Baba Sambet Kaur says that the only method remaining to persuade your enemy is the love. The only course of action that is uh, that is you know uh, available to you is is the is the love. And I think that is what is profound about Baba Sambet Kaur's entire movement. That his movement, though he was facing the worst of the enemies, you know the caste system is like. you know the thousand scams of the enemies fighting with each other they are like warring camps as baba sambedkar said and in the very in the in the in the in the in the in the warring camps it's not difficult to indulge into uh, what is called a violence or force so the only way by which we can win our enemy is by love love is the only way you know we can have force for some time but the force has a limits you know you cannot apply the force forever you cannot you cannot apply the force for the ever changing method to transform something you know because by force if you acquire something it's going to distort that very uh, thing on which the force is applied but the love is a very different sort of a force you know it's a different sort of an energy altogether 
so you know this this looks very uh, you know three simple lines but they capture the essence of the buddha's teachings cherish no anger forget your enmities win your enemies by love this is the buddhist way of life and the third verse goes like this the fire of anger should be stilled you see the the the, the anger is always equated with something burning and when we are filled with anger we are like burning we are burning all the time and 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 you know uh, anger has you know has been talked in buddhism in in many ways and uh, one, once there was in the million college there was a discussion one person i forgot his name he attacked you know critically on baba sambedkar that baba sambedkar is a buddhist why he is angry so much and in the in the next lecture baba sambedkar has answered that you know there are two kinds of angers one is the anger backed by the hatred and the, and one is the anger backed by love so you see the anger as an energy has to be stilled because this, there is an energy as baba sambedkar said that you know it's it cannot but we can we cannot but get angry when we see some kind of an operation we cannot uh, you know operation of a people or some people are exploited or something bad is happening towards something we it's natural for a human being to feel anger but that anger what is the ground of that anger whether the ground of that anger is hatred or whether the ground of that anger anger is love that's very important so love is the is the ultimate ultimate uh, sort of the 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 the, the uh, human emotion that we need to cultivate and love can take many manifestations so when we are talking about the on on anger and enmity we we are talking about you know uh, fire of anger should be stilled because if if the if the if the fire of anger is is driven by hatred it burns everything it burns the person who is having that anger it burns the other person to whom the anger is directed at so you see this is very important for to understand that the fire of anger should be stilled we always raise with fire anger you know there are situations in our life in the families in the in the in the between the countries the anger is always flaring up so instead of adding fuel to the fire the buddha would say still the anger the fire of anger should be stilled and very important isn't it it is not it's not it's it's you know sometimes it's not possible not to get angry it's looking at the social injustice looking at so many bad things happening around us then what do we do we have to steal our fire of anger and use that energy when we tame our anger there is an energy released within we have to use that energy for the more important work one who harbors the thought verse number 4 he reviled me he maltreated me overpowered me robbed me in him anger is never stilled this is uh, directly from the dhammapada the gatha is directly from dhammapada you know from the yamakvaga that he reviled me he maltreated me they overpowered me they robbed me in him anger is never stilled because we all the time are are hankering after this kind of angry thoughts that they have done this thing to me they have they have treated me badly they have overpowered me they have robbed me in him anger is never stilled so how do we steal the anger is by getting rid of these thoughts you see the verse number 3 says that the fire of anger should be stilled and the verse number 4 goes like this one who harbors the thought he reviled me maltreated me overpowered me robbed me in him anger is never stilled so if we are continue to harbor this kind of thoughts that you know we have been wronged all the time that you know we are victims all the time then the anger cannot be stilled it's not possible to get to steal the anger and let's go to the verse number 5 he how harbors not such a thought in him anger is stilled so if somebody is not harboring such kind of a thought then in him anger is stilled so that is the only way of stilling the anger you know letting go but that doesn't mean that you don't act you act in the world in a positive way so when you look at uh, enemy works evil to enemy hater to hater but whose is the evil so you see enemy works evil to enemy hater to hater hater works evil to hater but whose is the evil 
so you know if we we continue to harbor the enmity towards other if we continue to hate other people then what happens whose evil is this that that belongs to the person who harbors the, this kind of enmity that belongs to a person who harbors this kind of a hatred so verse number 6 is also very clear it's we are going from you know surface to the depth now so see seven verse number seven let a man overcome anger by love let him overcome evil by good let him overcome the greedy by liberality the liar by truth so you see anger and the antidote of anger is love so if you want to quench the quench the fire of anger the only way we can do is by cherish love cherishing the metta cherishing the karuna cherishing the mudita cherishing the upek you see so this verse number this verse number uh, what is called seven is very very clear isn't it let a man overcome anger by love so the only way by which a person can overcome their anger is by is by cultivating love let him overcome evil by good so if you want to if you want to you know overcome the evil the only way to you know overcome the evil is to do good to keep on doing good and we have seen in the previous sections the importance of doing good all the time let him overcome the greedy by liberality so if 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 somebody is stingy if somebody is greedy the only way to get rid of that is by giving is by you know dana so dana is an antidote on the on the on 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 on, on holding something tightly and the liar by truth so there are people lying all the time around us you know you know there are now now the, the, the lies are spread so fast because of the social media and all these technologies and uh, you know sometimes we might tend to fall in the game of you know liar versus liar but as the buddha says the liar has to be overcome you know uh, you know has to be you know uh, won by the truth so you see lies cannot be get rid of by spreading more lies because it will be a bundle of lies a cyclic nature of lies lies after lies lies after lies lies after lies and uh, you know they they can be only cut the cycle of lies can only be cut by the power of truth so you see let a man overcome anger by love let him overcome evil by good let him overcome the greedy by liberality the liar by truth so that's a very succinct sort of a way of presenting and the verse number goes it goes a step further speak the truth do not yield to anger so you see when we speak the truth you know we are not yielding to the anger sometimes when we are angry then you know we are more liable to speak untruth sometimes when we are when, are, when we are full of anger then in that situation we might tell lies we might we might spread more ignorance and i think this true this these two sentences are very important for us all of us to reflect speak the truth do not yield to anger give if thou art asked for little see so see if somebody ask us something even if they ask for little give more and i think that's that's how you know baba saheb ambedkar goes on uh, on you know creating the depth in the seemingly sim- simple sentences like cherish no anger forget no enemies win your enemies by love isn't it it all connects together give if thou are asked for little so you know that means the generosity of the heart so when the man is full of generosity of the heart the likelihood of uh, you know getting angry reduces isn't it it is not easy for somebody who is always uh, you know generous to feel angry and this verse number 9 is very beautifully expanded let a man live anger so we have to live our anger let him forsake pride that pride we have which can be sometimes the source of anger you know many a times it can be a source of anger so what do we do we have to forsake the pride let him overcome all bondages so all that binds us and makes us not free anything that puts us in the bondage we have to let it go isn't it we cannot be bonded we cannot be you know enslaved by anything we cannot but be free we cannot but be you know 
realize the total freedom that we all want to experience. So you see, this uh, verse number nine goes like this. Let a man leave anger. So we need to leave anger. Let it go. If we, there is an anger arising in us, we let the anger go. Let him forsake pride. The pride that we all cherish, me, myself, mine, that we have to let go. Let him overcome all the bondages. And all that binds us to certain things, you know, certain ideas, certain people, we have to overcome all bondages. And now this verse is so profound. No suffering befall the man who is not attached to name and form. So if we want to get rid of all the suffering, detachment from Nama Rupa is the only way by which we can end all suffering. So we have seen Nama Rupa, Rupa, Vedana, Sadhya, Sankara, Vidyanan. And the Buddha asked us to be mindful of it. And when we are mindful of our Nama Rupa, we become aware of the ultimate qualities of the Nama Rupa, that all the Nama Rupa are anicca, means impermanent. All the Nama Rupa are insubstantial, shunya. We cannot find anything essential in that. And all the Nama Rupa, if we, if we hold on to the Nama Rupa, they give rise to suffering. Three things, very simple. That's, the, that's all the Buddhism, you know, all about, is all about, you see. So this particular verse, no sufferings befall the man who is not attached to name and form. And in, in, in the, in the Dhamma Chakra Pavata Sutta Buddha says, Pancha Upadana Khanda Pidukha. Upadana khanda. Khanda means, you know, this all five nama rupa are called panchas khanda. So all this panchas khanda, if we attach, upadana means attachment, holding on to them, holding on to the five skandhas is ultimate cause of suffering. So no sufferings will fall the man who is not attached to name and form and who calls nothing his own. You see, it's very profound. There is nothing in the world which we can call our own. You know, in the end, what does the Buddha teach? Nothing. You know, no thing. Very profound. You know, this, this verse number nine, if we, if we study it, it is going to take us a long, long, long time for us to reflect on it deeply. I am going to read it again and I am going to gloss over the various aspects of it. Let a man leave anger. So a man must leave anger. Whatever anger there is, we must leave it. Let him forsake pride. Let him overcome all the bondages. Anything, anything that binds a human being to anything has to be, you know, overcome. All the bondages. If our, you see, in the, in the Buddha, the Buddha says, uh, you know, as Baba Samadhi written, you know, if we, there is a boat, if the boat is heavy, its speed is reduced. So we, we, we empty the boat. And the more we empty the boat, the faster the boat goes. So the more we are bonded towards, well, you know, different aspects of Nama Rupa, the more we, we are, we are, you know, fossilized. We don't move. We don't move towards the enlightenment. So the only way towards, move towards, way to move towards the enlightenment is to let go of all the Nama Rupa. And there is a beautiful uh, sutta in Pali, Bhara Sutta, burden. So we are all the time carrying the burden of Nama Rupa. Rupa, Vedna, Sadhya, Sankara, Vidyana. All the time we are carrying this heavy burden of Nama Rupa. And let it go. We are, the, the heaviness goes. Let it go. And your speed towards Nibbana increases by manifold. And that's what is the ultimate, ultimate uh, purpose of meditation. Even the Sati or mindfulness is defined as detachment from Nama Rupa. So ultimately when we detach ourselves from the Nama Rupa and why do we detach ourselves from Nama Rupa? Because we realize the ultimate nature of Nama Rupa as impermanent, as conditioned, as, you know, as, 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 you know, as Buddha says, the, the, um, the, the uh, uh, various qualities of the, of the, of the uh, Nama Rupa in terms of the uh, Anicca, Anatta, Dukkha, you know, because if we hold on to any idea, if we hold on to any form, if we hold on to any sankhara, if we hold on even to our mind, then we are bound to suffer. Anything attached to is going to create suffering. And that is what is the ultimate teaching of the Buddha. No sufferings befall the man who is not attached to name and form and who calls nothing his own. 
He owns nothing. He doesn't claim anything of his own. He claims nothing of his own. You know, these this two sentences has to be written in every houses so that we understand the ultimate essence of Buddhism. No sufferings befall the man who is not attached to name and form, Nama Rupa, and who calls nothing his own. Now, 10th. Very dynamic way Baba Sambedkar has explained it. He who holds back rising anger like a rolling chariot, him I call a rear driver. You see, anger is emerging. Anger is coming into our minds all the time. It's raging. And how does it raging? The simile is very beautiful. Like a rolling chariot. You see the chariot is rolling. Rolling means what is going here and there. Very apt simile. So when we, when, we, when, when we are full of anger, we are like the uncontrolled chariot or the car which, is, which, has, which has lost its control or the chariot which has, which has lost its control. And when we are full of anger, we, it's like that. And if we can hold back when we are angry, when we can hold back rising anger because rising begins with a small irritation and then that rise, rise anger flares up. Isn't it? So what is the Buddha teaching here? He holds back rising anger like a rolling chariot. Him I call a real driver. So who is a person who is in the real control of the thing? Who can control or rein the anger? It's very beautifully put up. Other people are but holding the rein. You see, we are just holding the rein, letting our mind go anywhere. But if we want to be a real driver, we should be able to, you know, control the rolling chariot. And that is what is meant here. And I find it very beautiful. This verse number 10 is very beautiful. He who holds back rising anger like a rolling chariot, him I call a real driver. Other people are but holding the reins. You see, this is so beautifully explained here. And verse number 11, conquest begets enmity. So if we win over something, if we profit something, if we gain something, you know, if we, if we, if we make something out of it, then, you know, it begets enmity. If we win over somebody or something, then, you know, it begets enmity. The conquered lie down in distress. Those who are vanquished or conquered lie down in distress. They feel very low. The tranquilized lie down in happiness, dismissing alike victory and defeat. See what a beautiful, what a beautiful way to phrase what we are supposed to do. We remain tranquil. We achieve that stillness. The tranquilized lies down in happiness, dismissing alike victory and defeat. Isn't it? Beyond this concept of victory and defeat, there is a concept of happiness. There is a concept of tranquility. There is a concept of stealing the mind. There is a concept of conquering the mind. So of all the conquests in the world, the Buddha says, the conquest of the mind is the ultimate victory. So in the world outside, we are always trying to win over, conquer over. We are always trying to overpower somebody. But as the verse number 11 goes, any conquest or anybody is going to lead to enmity. You know, it's called scoring the points. I score points over you. They score points over me. And you know, this, this idea of scoring the point over one another is never going to lead to the tranquility. You know, that I won the argument or I lost the argument. You know, this way of looking at the things, instead of that, we have to look at it whatever I have done, whether that makes me feel happy, whether that makes me feel tranquil, whether that makes me feel blissful, whether that makes me feel free. That's the criteria. So the verse number 11 is very, very unique in a sense of conquest begets enmity. The conquered lie down in distress. The tranquilized lies down in happiness, dismissing alike victory and defeat. And the verse number 12. There is no fire like lust. There is no fire like lust, as the Buddha says. No ill fortune like hatred. So if our minds are full of hatred, it's ill fortune. Isn't it? 
So what is the ill fortune? It's not that we are losing money is an ill, ill fortune. What is ill fortune? Is this that we are the 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 uh, if we if we lose our compassionate mind, that is the ill fortune. If we lose loving kindness, that is the ill fortune. If we lose that kind of uh, you know um, love, that is the misfortune. So what is the ill fortune? No ill fortune like hatred. So if if our minds are full of hatred. We are already misfortunate. We are unfortunate. We are ill-fortunate. You see the choice of the word ill-fortunate. You know, it's, it's, it's very beautiful. It's not unfortunate. It's ill-fortunate. It's always going to lead to the ill-fortune if we are full of hatred. There is no misery like the constituents of existence. You know, Pancha Upadan Khanda. You know, they are the misery. You know, we need to unpack the meaning of all this. Very, 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 very pithy sentences. Having a very deep meaning, you know. The constituents of existence is are the panchayopadan khanda, and 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 you know there is no mystery like the constituents of existence panchayopadan khanda. No happiness higher than the peace of nibbana. You see, when we let go everything and when our minds are tranquilized, peaceful, they are automatically blissful. They are automatically having that peace. And as the Buddha has said. There is no happiness higher than the peace of Nibbana. We are all the time, you know, trying to run after the, uh, you know, happiness. But we don't know where to look for the happiness. You know, in the tranquil, in the peaceful mind is the source of the happiness. So I'm going to read it again. There is no fire like lust. If, if you know, if the word is full of lust, it's going to burn everything. No ill fortune like hatred. There is no misery like the constituents of existence. No happiness higher than the peace of Nibbana. And the verse number 13. For hatred does not cease by hatred at any time. Hatred ceases by love. This is an old rule. Nahi verani vera, nahi verena verani sammati cha kudachanam. A verana cha sammati eso dhammo sanantano. This is what Baba Sambedkar got at the end of this, this, this subsection. Nahi verena verani sammati cha kudachanang a verana cha sammati esodhammo sanantano. Beautiful way to end this subsection. For hatred does not cease by hatred at any time. At any time. You know, the hatred can never be seized by hatred. Hatred ceases by love. By love only the hatred is seized. This is an old rule, Sanatan. You know, this is what is the timeless truth. Isn't it? There is another way of translating. This is the timeless truth that we all have to bear in our mind. So the, 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 the part, the subpart four of the Buddhist way of life is, you know, only 13 verses, but very profound. As, as the other sections of it. And as I, as I say all the time, that the Buddha and his Dhamma has this ability to open new doors of understanding all the time, to, 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 to take us to the very different, you know, nuanced layers of understanding the Buddha Dhamma. And before I open up uh, the class for the further questions or any comments, I'm going to read it through once again so that we, or everything ties up together. So the uh, fourth subsection on anger and enmity. Verse number one, cherish no anger, forget your enmities, win your enemies by love. Two, this is the Buddhist way of life. Third, the fire of anger should be stilled. Four, one who harbors the thought, he reviled me, maltreated me, overpowered me, robbed me. In him, anger is never stilled. Verse number five, he who harbors not such a thought in him, anger is stilled. Enemy works evil to enemy, hater to hater. But whose is the evil? You know, who, 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 who fills the consequences of this evil? Seven, let a man overcome anger by love. Let him overcome evil by good. Let him overcome the greedy by liberality, means by generosity, the liar by truth. Eight, speak the truth. Do not yield to anger. Give if thou art asked for little. Verse number nine, let a man leave anger. Let him forsake pride. Let him overcome all bondage. No sufferings befall the man who is not attached to name and form and who calls nothing his own. You know, there is a beautiful word for it in Pali, Akinchanam. He calls nothing his own. He who holds back rising anger like a rolling chariot, 
he might call a real driver you know are we the real driver of our lives or are we just holding the rein are we controlling the circumstances where the anger is going to flare up 11 conquest begets enmity conquest begets enmity the conquered lie down in distress the only way forward for a human being is the tranquilized lie down in happiness dismissing alike victory and defeat there is no fire like lust no ill fortune like hatred there is no misery like the constituents of existence no happiness higher than the peace of nibbana and the concluding words is this for hatred does not cease by hatred at any time hatred ceases by love this is an old rule and this is one of the aspects of buddhist way of life so you know this is as we have seen in the in the in this in this section and the previous subsections that how baba sambedkar gives us a clarity as to how as a buddhist we should live our lives as to how we should you know take the control of our life you know it we 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 just not you know drive on by the circumstances around us we have to in other words take the control of our minds control of our life so with this i stop and i open up the class for any any discussion any comment anything that anybody would like to talk about or discuss verse number 4 verse number 4 one who has the thought he revive me my treated me or for me or me. so in him anger is never still is uh, if uh, same thoughts come in mind repeatedly punar yeah. bhav yeah. se then uh, same same thoughts uh, come again and again yes But yes we have to control these uh, thoughts passions by uh, giving training to the mind cultivation yes. of mind yes beautifully beautifully said alka madam yes this is directly from the dhammapad so you know you can uh, there is opposite gatha of this as you said mm. madam that you know if we if we do not uh, harbor or cherish this kind of a thoughts our anger is stilled mm. yes. so you are right anybody so uh, the pali gatha goes like this uh, yes. for this verse uh, akochi mang avadhi mang ajini mang ahasi me ये विचार करीत वेर कभी ही शांत हो उट to other people like they say uh, our our hand are pointing the four fingers are pointing to, uh, towards a, another person mm-hmm. but we don't uh, reflect and uh, you know uh, for self analyze what we are doing and what we are not doing there is the same uh, gatha uh, which you have ended the session uh, which says like nahi vere na verani समंती ध कुदाचन अवेरे ने च समंती एस धम्मो सनंतनु सो वेराने वेर कधी शांत होत नाही तर निर्वेरामुळे स्वय शांत होते हाच या जगाचा सनातन नियम आहे अँड इफ आय कॅन कव्हर द अदर वर्सेस इज इट ओके हा प्लीज 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 मॅडम प्लीज इट्स गुड ऑलवेज गुड या सो द अदर वर्सेस व्हिच हॅव कम हियर आर फ्रॉम सुखवगो Uh, from the mapada uh, which says jayam veram pasavati dukham seti parajito upasanto sukham seti hitva jaya parajayam means 
विजय वैरायला जन्म देतो पराजित व्यक्ती दुःखी राहतो जय पराजय दोन्ही सोडून शांत झालेला मनुष्य सुखाने झोपतो अदर्स विचार बाबा साहेब हॅज कवर्ड हिअर इज वर्स नंबर टू झिरो टू इट गोज लाईक दॅट नथी राग समो अगी नथी दोष समो कली नथी खंड समा दुःखा नथी संती परंग सुखा म्हणजे आसक्ती सारखी दुसरी कोणतीही आग नाही द्वेषा समान दुसरा मळ नाही पंचस्कंद म्हणजे ऍज यू हॅव एक्सप्लेन रूप वेदना संज्ञा संस्कार अँड विज्ञान समान दुसरे दुःख नाही शांतीपेक्षा दुसरे कोणतेही मोठे सुख नाही व्हेरी गुड सो दिस हॅव कम फ्रॉम सुख वगो नाव अदर हॅव कम फ्रॉम विच हॅव बीन मोर स्ट्रेस ड्युरिंग अवर सेशन दिस आर फ्रॉम क्रोध वगो क्रोध वर्ग Uh, so i would like to uh, say the english meaning first because it has been stressed for more time uh, let a man live anger let him forsake pride let him overcome all bondage no sufferings befall the man who is not attached to name and form and who calls nothing his own this is hamapad verse 221 from kodavago In Pali, it goes like that. Hmm. Kodam jahe vipadja heya. Manang sanyojanang sabba mati ka maya. Hmm. Tang nama rupasming asajja manang akinchanang hmm. nanu patanti dukkha. Good, good. Uh, good. Marath, Marathi word, uh, earth goes like this. Krod sodun dilahe abhimanacha tyak kelahe sarva bandhananna par karu gele leahe. अशा नामरूपात आसक्त न होणाऱ्या अपरिग्रही व्यक्तींना दुःख संतप्त करीत नाही इंग्लिश आय वुड लाईक टू रीड इट गोज लाईक दिस ही हू होल्ड बॅक रायझिंग अँगर लाईक अ रोलिंग चॅरियॉट ही आय कॉल अ रिअल ड्रायव्हर अदर पीपल आर बट होल्डिंग द रिन्स दिस इज धम्मपद गाथा टू हंड्रेड अँड ट्वेंटी टू योवे उपतितं कोधं रथं भंतं व धारये तमहं सारथिं ब्रूमी रश्मी गाहो इतरो जनो मराठी अर्थ गोज लाईक दिस जो भडकलेल्या क्रोधाला मार्गभ्रष्ट रथाप्रमाणे रोखून धरील त्याला मी खरा सारथी म्हणतो दुसरे लोक तर केवळ लगाम धरणारेच असतात अँड there are two more verses which have come uh, from kozha vag again uh, it goes like this uh, english goes like this speak the truth do not yield to anger give if thou art asked for little so this is dhammapad gatha 224 satyam bhane na kujjeya dajja pasming pi yachito ete hi तिही ठाणेही गच्छे देवान संतिके मीन्स सत्य बोला क्रोध करू नका तुम्ही मागितल्यावर तुमच्या जवळ थोडे असले तरी सुद्धा द्या या तीन गोष्टी केल्यामुळे एखादा मनुष्य देवांच्या समीप म्हणजे देवलोकात जातो दिस इज अ मिनिंग अँड अदर द लास्ट गाथा आय वुड लाईक टू रीड फॉर द सेशन इट गोज लाईक दिस लेट अ मॅन ओव्हरकम अँग बाय लव्ह let him overcome evil by good let him overcome the greedy by liberality the liar by truth this is hamapad gatha 233 it goes like this manopakop rakheya manasa samvuto siya manoducharitam hitva manasa sucharitam chare means manacha chanchalte pasun savad raha manavar sayam theva मानसिक दुराचाराचा त्याग करून मानसिक सदाचरण करा सो द सिक्वेन्स विथ विच बाबासाहेब इन्क्लुडेड ऑल दिस गाथाज आर इज सिम्पली ब्युटिफुल अँड द मॅसेज यू वॉन्टेड टू कन्वे ऑन अँगर अँड इन मिटी बिकॉज वीज आर द रेग्युलर वी लिव इन अ डेली बेसिस वे आर वी कम अक्रॉस द सर्कमस्टेन्सेस विच डज नॉट गो अकॉर्डिंग टू युअर विशेष अँड 
these are the test or 24 by 7 put in front of all so these verses are real, like constant reminder for us to you know behave in a proper order uh, it's easy to get angry but if we uh, you know ground our mind to see the reality as it is because uh, we are the one which get punished by our anger first nobody or the person in front of may not be compulsorily will be suffered by it so we must take care of ourselves and uh, let go of our anger i guess that is the gist uh, thank you for listening all thank you richa for bringing up our pali verses thank you so much very well done okay anybody else any any comments from anybody else If not, then we neatly. Uh, uh, try, okay. We should uh, try to understand impermanence and cause and uh, effect theory of Buddha to yes. control the passions. Yes. And we should do not add fire by getting angry, by mm. getting greedy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Very true. Very true. Very true. So I think uh, that beautifully summarized by Alkatai. She has done a wonderful uh, comment at the end. So if there is nothing for today for the class, then we might end it for today and uh, see you in the next class because it... it... Alka, madam? No, no, no. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so thank you so much all for joining in today and see you in the next class. Jai Bhim Namo Jai Bhim Namo